Uh, so thanks for joining us uh, tonight for this artist talk. Um, this is a talk in conjunction with our current exhibition, From Earth, uh, which includes uh, the work of four artists who are joining me uh, live. Um, so uh, From Earth is uh, a show that includes work by Carol Aquilano, Lynn Feldman, Judy Goringer, and Patty Rosati. Uh, each of the artists have studios on the third floor of the Anderson Arts Building in Rochester, New York. Um, and uh, this exhibition consists of painting, collage, photo-based mixed media works, um, and uh, provides four ways to see the common thread which weaves through it all, uh, the earth, nature, and how each artist connects to the natural world through their distinctive lens and vision. Um, this exhibition is made possible in part by the Rochester Area Community Foundation and the New York State Council on the Arts with support of the Office of the Governor and New York State Legislature. Uh, so I'm going to um, introduce each of the artists uh, as uh, images of their work come up here, um, and uh, they're going to share a little bit about themselves. Uh, so first up, uh, we have Carol. Hi. Uh, so Carol, would you like to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, um, you know, anything relating to your, your background uh, or what goes into making your work? Uh, sure. Well, um... I've been working on a full sheets of watercolor paper in a garden, uh, which is um, about an hour south of Rochester. And it's a, a place where I can set up my easel and uh, work out these compositions that are uh, sometimes pretty realistic, but then also I can veer off the path and uh, just kind of um, add my own motifs here and there and and really uh, just borrow the shapes in the garden that I see, like the, you know, flowers and grasses and and um, those different kinds of shapes that, that I, I'm very intrigued by uh, the, the patterning and, um, and and really basically working out the composition um, for each uh, full sheet. And I, I did do some like this one that's all blue. I just decided to um, uh, minimize the color and just go straight with a monochromatic scheme. And I actually copied one of my paintings to make this painting, which I thought would be kind of fun. And mm. uh, so, um, and this one is done with acrylic ink. Um, th this painting is much more uh, imaginative, as you can see that I'm I still am using those kinds of garden motifs, uh, things that are uh, up close and then things that are far away. And, uh, you, you know, I'm not always 100% sure of what it's going to look like uh, in the end. I don't do a whole lot of planning. I just kind of attack the paper and uh, with the shapes and and then just add the color where I see fit and you know sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't and this is another one that's acrylic ink and um, it's a lot more uh, freeform uh, kind of jazzy and I I was excited about the way that this one came out I think mostly because it was veering off the path of mm -hmm. uh, anything that was concrete in front of me. And actually, I did this one in my studio, so I, I was just borrowing from those all those uh, ideas and motifs that are in my head. There's a lot of them. <laughs> all right, great. Um, uh, let's see. So uh, next up, we've got uh, some work to look at by Lynn. Uh, Lynn, a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up in New York City, and um, my Art training is from the Art Students League. I started there when I was 12, where I went to um, get my portfolio together so I could go to a special magnet high school, high school called the High School of Music and Art. Um, I left the Art Students League when I was 28. Hmm. Um, I, I studied there. Um, I did. I worked in oils and figure drawing the entire time. And when I left. The Art Students League, we moved to Rochester and set up my own studio and started working on my own work from the figure for many years. 
and in oils until I took a week long workshop at Bennington College about 15 years ago. And um, it was called Painting with Fabric. And I learned how to incorporate the actual fabrics into the canvas. Um, because the glue I use is water-based, I had to change over to acrylics, which took a while. Acrylics and oil are, are very different in how they are go on and how long they take to dry. And um, I absolutely fell in love with this way of working. And that's what I do now. I think of fabric um, the same way I do paint. Great. All right. And um, actually, uh, the, the kids in our after school program uh, tried their hand at mixing fabric and uh, and paint for one of their projects this uh, this session. So it was a really cool thing to, to see. So. Cool. All right. Great. Well, thank you, Lynn. And uh, Judy. Hi, I uh, uh, probably of the four of all of us, I'm probably the newest painter. Um, and I'll tell you why, but I grew up in Rochester and uh, started at RIT in the art and design program and then went through a very restless 1970s period and went to a few other colleges, including RISD and Brockport, ended up with an art education degree at Nazareth with a focus of going into um, public schools and teaching kids, which I love. I probably had the best job or one of the best jobs in the world, challenging as it, as it was. I love teaching kids. And I think some of that youthful, childlike stuff is still with me and sometimes comes out in my work. Um, I work with acrylics mostly. Uh, there are a few encaustic pieces in the show, uh, but most of the time it's acrylic on a wood substrate. The, this particular picture right now is acrylic on canvas that's cut up and glued to, to wood shapes. And I cut them out with a saw and glue them together and, and adhere them. But most, most of the time I'm just working on a wood uh, panel or a cradle board made out of wood. And um, I've always worked in acrylic, uh, but after teaching for close 38 years or so, I retired. I rented a studio in the Anderson Arts Building, and that's where I met Patty and Carol and Lynn, and we became friends. And um, I really started painting when I rented the studio because I was so busy working all the years that I was teaching. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do much of my own work. I also worked in several art galleries in Rochester. I loved the gallery work, um, but I was pretty busy and I had kids and I didn't really start painting till, till um, maybe 10 or 12, 12 years ago or so. So I'm, I'm loving it. I paint almost every week. This is a diptych that you're looking at right now. I think I've used some uh, colored pencil drawing in there. I use a particular drawing material called art stick, which is like a, the inside of a colored pencil. And I draw with that as well on top of the acrylics. Um, and I paint almost every week. Great, all right. Thanks, Judy. And uh, Patty. Hi. Um, well, I am not a painter, <laughs> so I'm the uh, odd person out in this group, but they've been very kind to me anyways. I am a mark maker. I don't really identify and never have as a photographer per se, but everything I've always done is photo based. Um, way back in the day, especially in grad school and when I first started teaching at RIT, I was doing primarily portraits and dance and theater, but mostly portraits and dance. And then uh, digital came around and I didn't do, always wanted to do landscapes, but my father was a painter. So, you know, if it didn't look like a really great watercolor or an oil painting, it's like it wasn't, traditional photography didn't work for me. And then when digital came, everything changed. And uh, I started working digitally way early. And um, 
So then I started using in the early 90s, the scanner as a camera, the flatbed scanner, as well as my, well, not till recently, my phone. So for a long time, it was analog to digital back to analog. And now it's digital to analog to digital to analog. And, you know, this continuous loop that I go through all the time. And the thing I love about what I've been able to do in the last few years when I switched over to working with nature and all the stuff that you walk over, like all the little pieces of things that you would miss, I would just, you know, always carried a really big bag and, and a clipper and would just harvest while I was out walking and bring them home and throw them on the scanner. But the other thing that's really cool is I was able to start to really incorporate stitching and stitching is part of my heritage. And I was, you know, we used to sew buttons on cards as soon as we were old enough to hold a needle. And so it, it's kind of a cultural combination. My father really gave me love of nature. I used to go hunting and fishing with him. I was his designated son out of the four girls and my mother loved her garden. So it's kind of a, and she's the one who taught me how to do all the stitching and handwork. So I feel like this work is really because of them and the culture that I grew up in. So I'm, I'm really excited about some of the directions that it's going in. Great, all right. Well, thank you all. <clears throat> and um, so uh, this exhibition from Earth, um, you know, everyone is connected to the natural world because uh, we all live on Earth, at least at this point. Um, so so <laughs> it's not, um, not uncommon that we're all connected to nature, but, you know, not every artist uh, makes work specifically about that or has images that are related directly to that. So what brings you um, to that place of wanting to, um, you know, want to make your work the way that you do um, that leads you to being in a, a show uh, with three friends called From Earth? And then anyone can start, um, you know, on this response here. Well, I had been working from the figure for so many years, you know, probably 40 years. And um, I, I love animals and I love being in the woods and I'm a hiker and we go to Maine every summer. And I, it, would, it was just a natural thing for to bring what I love the most into my work. Um, what I'm trying to do now is kind of simplify the shapes more. So I'm sort of I'm working from you know what what nature looks like and and abstracting it somewhat, but you're still able to see you know see the uh, what I'm doing. Not well expressed, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> If I can join in, um, I really enjoyed growing up camping with canoe camping and portaging, paddling, hiking, doing a lot of a lot of uh, lakes, uh, portaging up north in Algonquin Park, um, and being away from the city where I lived most of the time. And then when I became a grown up, I continued that with my kids always took photographs, started taking a little sketchbook. And um, at some point that sketchbook led, you know, of course, to the paintings. Um, some of my paintings are, so a lot of them go back to that Northwoods uh, landscape. And some of them are inspired by other things like a trip my parents took to the Arctic Circle in the 1960s. They left me behind with my siblings, but they went up there, which was really kind of a crazy thing for people to do in the 60s. Yeah. And um, literally at the top of, of the Arctic Circle. And I did one painting, which is in the show based on that. It's very cool colors. Another painting is inspired by hiking in Colorado in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. And that's very warm painting. So you know, it's it's the inspiration that that that's around us. Um, it's lovely to be in an environment where you don't see anything man-made. Hmm. 
I'll join in. I um I really um can relate to that, Judy. And uh, I find myself um, feeling quite free when I'm in a natural setting that, you know, there's nobody around and um, I can just do whatever comes naturally. And so that's very inspirational. And I, I, uh, I like to experiment and uh, I just find the, the views of the, where, well, at least if I'm in some gorgeous garden, it's just like begging to be. It's like there's a million paintings wherever I look. So that's the problem I have. It's like, I don't know where to focus because yeah. there's just so much um, beauty. And so I'm, I I just think it's so inspirational. And, and, you know, you can get real close up and then you can kind of zoom out and go far away. And there's like just so much to take in. It's like a, it, it's a, like eternity. Yeah, absolutely. I like the fact that it changes all the time. Um, that it just changes yeah. constantly. And I like watching things fall apart and nature falls apart and then it comes back and rebuilds itself over and over and over again. And if only we could learn from that, but we don't. And there's a certain, one of the things I'm, I'm fixated on now is um, fingerprints. And there's fingerprints within nature, you know, the, the way a leaf is shaped, the rings on a tree from a cutting, even blades of grass. So collecting those in combination with photographing with my phone, which always kind of blows my mind what you can get with your phone, and then bringing them back here and putting them on the scan bed where these little teeny tiny things that nobody else would notice um, become these huge pieces of something. And I'm just completely entranced with the stuff that I find, like at one point I decided uh, I really wanted to collect mushrooms. And all of a sudden they showed up in my front yard. It's like, did I always have those? Or is it just because I'm thinking about them and they presented themselves? So I feel so fortunate. And, you know, people have things to say about Rochester, but Rochester is pretty extraordinary in how many parks we have. Um, my backyard is Ellison Park and I can walk over there and it's it's just amazing. So it's a never ending resource for me where doing portraits and working with people are a different kind of challenge, but nature just always rejuvenates me and makes me feel really great. I just, I get so excited looking at little tiny leaves and little tiny things. It's like, ooh. yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, the, the idea of like, well, tell us why you feel connected to nature is such a, a silly question, you know, because we're all, you know, it, everything is made up of the same stuff, you know, in 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 nature, in the universe, you know, we are all part of, of that larger kind of, you know, what the world is. So uh, it's, it's just interesting to think about like, well, what connects you to nature, you know, but I think, I guess specific, we were talking about why do you make images of it, but um, it, it, you know, whenever we have a show that's kind of based on on that it's like well I, everything's kind of about that right i mean so it's it's just kind of a funny <laughs> a funny thing to think about um but one of the thing that um i thought of when uh when you were talking carol was that you're you kind of go back and forth between working in a garden you know surrounded by the things that you're painting and then also in the studio and i didn't know if anyone else um you know had had done I mean, I guess, uh, Patty, you're picking things up and bringing them back to the studio. Um, I know, Ju Judy, you mentioned sketching. Um, but, uh, you know, is there anyone else kind of back and forth between being outdoors, actually making the work on site and, and in the in, in the studio? I, well, I use photographs and and other things, too. But a lot of my work, so I may start with a photo and bring it back to the studio, but a lot of it's very enhanced exaggerated, stylized, and I love pushing my work 
towards abstraction. And I'd like to go further with that. How far can I go into abstraction and still have the viewer understand that this is from Nate, you know, this is a landscape or this is something from nature that they would know sort of. And, and I'm always trying to push it in that direction. I work, um, I do photograph constantly. Part of my daily practice is to make a series of images literally every single day. I've for, I don't know, as far back as I can remember decades, uh, and even before digital, I would photograph what I always what I called scenes from my house. And now it's the scenes from my house are usually outside and involve nature. Then I can take those images and I can abstract them with a variety of tools, digital tools, and put them back together again in a different form, which is a very different process from the scanograms that I do. But it's it's just never ending the levels of inspiration. And I just, um, my senses are truly connected to nature. And I think some of us are just inherently more <clears throat> maybe in tune with, feel comfortable with, have had the opportunity to be out in nature and really grow from it. Yeah, and it's interesting to think about, um, you know, J Judy, you mentioned it, um, and and you kind of just did too, Patty. But um, talking about abstraction, and and Carol, I guess I mean you, you all do this, and like uh, you know anyone that's not making um, you know an exact depiction of what they saw, uh, I mean even that's an abstraction to some degree. But um, <laughs> you know that idea of how far can I push this, and is it still recognizable? You know, like you know, Patty, how, 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 how far can I zoom in on this thing and still make it look like the thing that I'm, you know, that I picked yeah. up? Um, you know, I think that that's a really interesting exercise as an artist. And it just kind of, I don't know, I find that the more you focus on something specific, the deeper in you can go and, and the world just kind of opens wide, you know, right up. Well, you get really into texture. I mean, the amount of texture in our world is, is amazing. So, you know, that ability to like, you know, go in really close and it doesn't matter what it is. It's just all of a sudden you see the veins and the, the little particles and all the pieces of that and the abstraction that happens to it is, is really quite remarkable. And then there's also the chaos of nature. I mean, it's, it so echoes our lives. I mean, it's, it's a mess out there, but somehow it, always knows when to go and do what it needs to do for the next season. So, you know, that's what I call the entropy into the gentropy stuff. It's, it's us, but on a very seasonal basis, which I feel very fortunate to watch all the time. Yeah, that's a good point. Seasonal. We're so affected by that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really affected. Um, yeah. I've had a mute because I have grandchildren in the background here. So I'm coming mm -hmm. back. I think a big inspiration for me was some trips we've done. And um, one of my favorite, my absolute favorite animal in the world is the moose. And I'm a bit moose obsessed, as all my friends know right now. And <laughs> so on some trips, we actually saw one. And I knew, I knew once I saw this, that I had to paint this unbelievably magnificent animal. So I took the form of the moose and then a lot of the shapes around it are somewhat abstracted, mm. um, just simplified. I'm one of the artists who I'm very inspired by and influenced by is Milt Mabry. And um, I've, I've looked at his work and he just simplifies, He, you know, you know what he's painting, but he has simplified it down to the absolute most basic form. And I haven't quite done that. I'm, I'm working on that. <laughs> That's why they call it a practice, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, I think if, you know, if, if we're not, um, you know, replicating exactly what we see, because um, like people can really appreciate um, technical skill, you know, if you say, wow, that looks just like what I saw outside my window, you know, uh, but the opposite side of that is a more poetic retelling of how you felt about something or, um, you right. know, the impression you got from from something, and I think 
they're, you know, both kind of ways of, of doing that are equally impressive. Um, because if you can kind of, you know, emote a feeling in someone just by having, you know, this abstracted view of nature, I think that's pretty, pretty powerful for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that, you know, the fact that you can create all these emotions from being outside, I know it happens to me, there's certain places, like Lynn was saying, you go different places in the world, and it's like, oh, my God, how come nobody told me, you know, the, like Carol was talking about the color of the water a couple of weeks ago, and it, you know, been to that place, and it's like, oh, my God, I didn't, I, who knew that it was so crystal clear, and the color of turquoise behind Judy's head right now. And, and it stays that way all the time. It's pretty remarkable. I think another, yeah. oh, sorry. Another interesting thing is so we're colorists. We're all colorists in different ways. And color pushes your work into a mood mm. and be very solemn. And, and Patty, Patty's work, it's very intimate sometimes. Um, you know, the darkness makes you look at the detail or the expanse of it. But um, we all use color in different ways. And it and it gives us it puts energy into our work in different ways. And um, I was thinking about that because, you know, most three of us use lots of color all the time and 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 are constantly struggling and working with color and balancing and, you know, rethinking color and and then. But but Patty does all the time in a different way. I mean, I had to really look at my colleagues here and find out what they do with color to say that we're colorists, uh, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Well, and along that line, those lines too, I think the fact that we're all on the same floor and we kind of, you know, sure. we go in and out of each other's studios on a regular basis. It was a couple of days ago, we were in Lynn's studio and she was staring at her current piece and we're like, well, it needs contrast. No, it needs neutrality. No, I think it needs light over here. And as each one of us came in, we hit on something and I'm sure Lynn stopped listening to us. <laughs> but, but that it's been so impactful for me. Yeah. Um, another of our group, when she comes into my studio, it's the work turns into something else completely. And then she comes back with, oh, here, use this, use that. Try the, and it's like, oh, this is why you have, we live in this space because it's collaborative, it's reinforcing. And for me, ironically, I never wanted to be, I thought, in a space where there were lots of people who had access to each other. Because when you're working full time and you have kids, it's like, I just want to be by myself, close the door. And I could not mm -hmm. have fallen into a better scenario than we have now because we do share all the time in a, in a very critical but uh, generous, positive way. And we're, I don't know, I just think we're really freaking lucky. <laughs> That I was agree. So eloquent, right? Freaking lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it can be such a solitary thing being an artist for sure. And, you know, for someone like me who's got a studio in the basement, you know, that's like as solitary as you could get. <laughs> um, you know, I don't even I don't even interact with the daylight, you know. So um, but it's 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 always interesting to hear, you know, pros and cons, you know, of of you know, a space like like what you all have. Um, but, but I think a lot of the time we have to be solitary. We're, we're not always socializing. Oh, yeah. No. Right, right. We but at least it opens know. up that possibility that, you know, right. if you're stuck right. on something or or you're just like, right. I can't, I can't, I don't want to do this right, right now. What what else can I do? Can yeah. I go down and yeah. see if someone else is feeling this way? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I work in three different places. I do a lot of work home because right now my entire house is like a whole nother studio. And then I have to go to another place to make large prints. And then the studio is, it shifts and morphs into now I'm doing sculpture and I'll get back into doing wax again. Um, so it it's so nice to have that movement and flexibility. That's another thing I feel lucky about. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about um, looking at art in each of your studio spaces, you know, like you said, you're in Lynn's studio, you know, giving, 
giving feedback on a piece that's that's in progress. Um, but like all all of this work came from your respective studios. You probably you know were around while a lot of the work that's in the show was being made. Um, you know, are there major differences between seeing it uh, in the studio space versus seeing it in an exhibition? Like how how different is it to see it all together and not separated by walls and you know uh, hallway? Um, but also, you know, what is what is that experience like to see it from the studio to the gallery uh, when not all because it's I mean, any exhibition is, is that way, right? You go, obviously, an artist brings it from one place to the other. But in this case, all four of you are kind of coming from the same place and having this experience together. I mean, it's wonderful seeing it up in the gallery because in the studio, there's so much going on. I mean, I probably have 30 paintings. You know, and, and I'm messy and there's stuff all over the place, you know, to see it on a clean wall, you know, with a beautiful mm -hmm. light. Um, it's any minute. <laughs> and I also think it, it putting it into a gallery space gives it a, a sense of credibility that we don't get in our, I hate to use that word because that's probably a wrong word, but it, it puts it in a place that where it can be seen at perhaps as a finished piece that can be viewed beautifully. And I was surprised that our work held together so well. I didn't, you know, I, we've, we haven't hung our work together before. So mm -hmm. seeing it on the wall of a gallery with you, Bradley, you hung the show. And it was very interesting to see how it related to, like, you know, Patty's related to Carol's and Carol's relate, you know, all of these pieces had to work together in some way and they did and that was a surprise for me i always think it's really important to have exhibits because when you get it out of your own studio even if it's been there for a while and you put it in a different place it really marks a moment in time so at this point from like september until now i can look at this work and go okay i'm done with that I'm going yep. to move into this direction where if it never really left the workspace for me, I wouldn't be able to move <laughs> on or finish something and then move on. So it's really represents like, okay, right now, beginning of February, 2024, this is represents what I've done the last few months. Okay. What's next? Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it becomes a really powerful vehicle, I think. Yeah, sometimes um, the, when I'm the end of the summer, I, you know, I might have made, uh, you know, a dozen large paintings and they might actually, some of them might be finished and some of them may need a little tweaking. <laughs> and so um, this is a, always a good opportunity to uh, consider each piece in the studio and bring it to a place where I feel that it's finished. And then I'm framing the work since they're watercolors on paper. So in that way, once the piece has a mat around it and a nice wooden frame, and then it's underneath a piece of glass, it looks <laughs> better. <laughs> it just looks better. And it, it and then to hang it on a wall, I mean, and and with the right lighting, it's um, it's it certainly does um, make a difference. Uh, to me, to to see the work like that, I mean, there are, there are times when I might say, ah, I should have made this a little darker, or I should have done that. And um, I mean, sometimes I do take work out of the frame, and I might make an adjustment. But uh, typically, that is the the end point, the framing, and um, so I I love to see it in a gallery setting. And as as the other girls have said, you know, in the when you see it in the studio, that's one thing, and it's surrounded by so much chaos. And um, <laughs> typically, I bring the work home, and I'll hang it on a wall to see how it looks in my house, mm -hmm. and if it's if it's finished, and if I like it. Um, and th that's always a good test. But a gallery space is is really it's just really great. Your gallery space is excellent, the lighting and the oh, floors and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, and I was really struck because I, you know, um, similar to what Judy said, um, you know, uh, about how, how great the work looked together. 
I was really struck by how many, you know, conversations there were happening on the wall between all the work. And it was, you know, because I had worked with each of you, you know, whatever you were working on or whatever you're interested in showing. Mm -hmm. And we kind of kind of worked through that process together, you know, selecting the work. And, um, you know, I knew that the work all related in a certain way, but I didn't know that it all went together, you know, like what I mean. So it was like I knew it would be good in the exhibition um, and there'd be some nice variety. But um, you know, that main, the, the one, the largest wall in the gallery, I just like see the, the colors, you know, appearing all the way down the wall. And it's just so interesting to see, um, cause you all have very distinct styles. Um, and, and also to see how, you know, Patty's, uh, photo based works, you know, fit in with that too. And they really fit nicely, you know, and that, that adds a nice, um, you know, variety and a nice texture, uh, and then similar with, uh, some of Judy's, um, you know, more like found wood uses using found wood as some of the the substrates that really adds another layer too. So, but just you know, even color alone, like there's a certain yellow color which appears across like almost all of your your work, and it's just really really cool to see how that that all comes together for sure. I knew they look fabulous together. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I stopped framing work and matting work many years ago, and that's why I work on textiles. Um, sometimes what I'll do, what I usually do, is put a layer of hot wax and or cold wax just to seal the print, even on fabric. And for me, it's about, you know, and that's why I love, I wish I were a painter, because you could get so close to the piece. And with photographs, you usually can't do that. But I do it that way so that I can and a viewer can just get as intimate as they need to with the image. And wax for me is um, is like an accessory. So it allows me to do things that if I didn't use it sometimes, I wouldn't be able to get away with so much without framing and matting things. Yeah, I like that um, immediacy of of being able to get up close to something and really seeing the surface and not having the glass or plexiglass to in be and in between. I, I really do appreciate that. Yeah, but I love a well matted and framed piece too because we keep talking about finish and is it finished and it does make such a difference when you put those rectangles around it. And it's, you know, it's just so many different ways of working. Yeah. Really yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I have um, uh, other work that I make with uh, acrylic paint on panels right. and um, that are more in the abstract vein. And, um, well, sometimes those paintings, they don't even get finished because I can keep changing them. I yeah. can just that, keep changing that, them. That's when you need that finality of oh, the deadline yeah. for the show is now, so it's gonna <laughs> the work is finished. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh boy. Um, well, I think um, you know this has been a, a really great uh, you know discussion, and uh, I'm really excited um, to still have um, you know a couple of weeks here with living with your work in the gallery, um, and um, I just want to remind everyone um, that the show runs through uh, Wednesday, February 21st. Um, and the gallery hours are Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Thursday through Saturday uh, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, and you can also view uh, images, of, images of the exhibition as well as our virtual walkthrough of the exhibition online at our website. Um, and also you can preview and purchase artwork uh, on the <laughs> website as well. And that's MainStreetArtsCS.org. Um, and, uh, I guess, um, any, any last words from, from you all? What do you, what do you, any, any last words to leave us with? Well, let's do shameless advertising. There's a workshop oh, yeah. on the 24th, <laughs> yeah, so February 24th. Four spots left. Yep. For, uh, yeah. the workshop, uh, with, with Patty, uh, the image transfer workshop using, uh, ink, ink aid, uh, uh, technology. Film transfers onto anything you want to put it on anything. Yeah. And we can also say that there's First Friday. Yes. At Anderson Alley Arts Building. 
6 Don't to worry. 9 p.m. The first and Friday you can of see every all month. of us. <laughs> <laughs> In We're person. <laughs> yeah. Come hang out. <laughs> well, great. Well, um, well, thank you all. And, um, you. and uh, for those of you out there, we, we look forward to seeing you here at, uh, at Main Street Arts to see this show. So thanks for all your work, Bradley. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. you. Thank, thank you, Brad. you, Brad. Yeah. Bye.